Welcome back to the Contractors Compass YouTube channel. Today we are looking at jigsaws. I recently purchased the Moffel P1CC jigsaw that you see on the left. And then I have my old jigsaw, which is the Makita 4329K jigsaw. And I'd really like to see how these two compare. The Moffel jigsaw retails for about $700 online. And the Makita jigsaw retails for about $75 to $90 online. I'm really curious to see what's the difference between these two jigsaws and if it's worth buying a jigsaw that's seven times the price of a regular jigsaw. So I think first off, let's take a look at each jigsaw's features and then we'll go from there. The Makita jigsaw comes in a case just as you see here. Um, it's a pretty basic case, but it has a handle, which is nice, and it has storage for blades, um, and everything fits in it pretty well. Um, overall, it's a fine case for a jigsaw. So the Makita 4329K uh, comes with a six foot cord, which is okay length for most things. It has a trigger pull handle with a lock on that you can press that button in. It's definitely set up for right handed people, but the pull feature can work for both right and left handed people. It's pretty comfortable either way. On the top here, it has a speed controller that goes from one to six to control how much speed the blade's going at. It is a about 500 watt jigsaw or 3.9 amps. So it has a decent amount of power, but nothing crazy. The blade is an Allen key adjust blade. So you need to use the Allen key that's included in the back to adjust the blade. It has three pendulum modes, one, two, and three, for amount of swing you want. And then it has a dust port on the back. That doesn't really work that well in my experience. It also has this guard on the front here that can come down to help guide dust back into the dust port. Finally, it has a base that can adjust from negative 45 to positive 45 degrees with an Allen key again. This jigsaw takes standard um, T-shank blades, like most jigsaws. Um, and overall, it's a fine little jigsaw to have. So this is the case that the Moffel jigsaw comes in. It is actually a sustainer from Festool that's been rebranded T-Max Moffel, but it interlocks with all Festool sustainers, which is kind of cool. I don't like that the case is white. It gets dirty very easily, which is annoying. Um, but it also has this blow molded insert that has space for all the little accessories you get with the Moffel jigsaw. Here is the Moffel jigsaw. This jigsaw is a lot heftier than the Makita jigsaw. And it's definitely set up for right handed people. As you see, the on off switch is here. It's not the trigger pull style switch of the Makita. It's simply on off, which has a very nice action on it. On the back of the saw is the scroll wheel for how much speed slash power you want. It again goes from one to six. The main difference between the two jigsaws is that the Moffel jigsaw is 1100 watts or about seven amps, which is about double what the Makita can output. Um, it also comes with this very nice 13 foot cord, so you have plenty of reach. Right here it has the pendulum, so it has five different pendulum modes. Um, and then here we have the front of the saw. Um, to take out the blade, there's this switch right here, which is nice. It's very stiff, but it works very nicely. Um, this saw also comes with a bunch of different little features that I'll show you. One interesting thing is that this saw comes with only a 90 degree base for the $700 price tag. If you want the tilt base, it's another $150, which seems kind of ridiculous. So here are the main attachments that this jigsaw comes with. It comes with a dust port, which unclips from the back of the base right here. And you can swap that out for the dust port, which just slides in like that. Um, it's a very nice dust port and works very well compared to the uh, Makita one. But most of the time I run it without a dust port and just this little cap in here. It also comes with a um, this thing, which is a little circle guide and edge guide. So this little base here, um, you push it to the side and then it flips up and it flips back. And inside this base, you see these pins right here and here. These pins, you can drill a little hole 
into a piece of wood and then do a perfect circle with this base. It also has one that's just a pin that you don't need to drill a hole, so it'll just tack into your piece. Edge guide and circle guide slides in to the saw, like right here. And then there's a little, um, here, let me turn the saw on. There's a little, uh, little hands twist thing that you pull out and then you can adjust how much you want the radius of the circle to be or how far away from the edge you want to be. Um, this saw also runs on the Moffell tracks. So if you have the Moffell track saw, um, you can run the saw on that, which is cool for doing long straight cuts. The final thing here is the splinter guards. These little guys go inside in the front of the saw here. So they slide in the front of the saw like this. And basically it forms a zero clearance with the blade. So you push these in and cut into this one and then it stops splinters from forming while cutting. The final cool thing about the saw is Moffell makes special blades for it um, that are super tough. This is the W1 blade, which is really cool because as you can see, the back of the blade is a lot skinnier than the front of the blade. It's almost like two blades doubled up. So that allows you to do really tight circles. Um, these blades are really expensive. They're like $15 each. So definitely use them sparingly. But the Moffell also will accept a regular T-style um, jigsaw blade, which is nice. I have this extra long uh, wood blade from Bosch. It's a T744D. And this blade's about six inches. And then I have a three by four piece of wood that I'm going to cut through and see which one of these is faster and how much faster the Moffell is going to be for seven times the price of the Makita. Here is the piece of wood that we're going to be cutting. It's a piece of pine that's approximately three inches deep and four inches long. And we'll see how long it takes for these saws to make it through this wood. Uh, first up, we'll do the Makita to see how it does. So to give each of these saws the best chance, we're turning the speed up to six on each saw. There you go, now you can see it, six, and three, or full pendulum. Let's see how the Makita does. Not bad for a $100 saw. Now we have the Moffell. It has the exact same blade that I used on the Makita. Its pendulum's turned all the way up. And so is its speed. Let's see how it does. Wow, that was really fast. After all looking at the features of these two saws, the question is, is the Moffell saw worth it, being seven times the price? And I would say, probably not. Am I disappointed that I bought the Moffell? No, I think it's an amazing jigsaw, but I think it's a lot more than you really need out of a jigsaw in terms of power and performance. Um, I'm still really happy that I have this saw and I really like it, but I think that for most people, the Makita jigsaw is just fine. After all, the Makita cut through that very big piece of pine in 10 seconds, and the Moffell cut through it in 6. Which, in the grand scheme of things, you're probably not cutting through giant pieces of pine with your jigsaw that often. So, I think that the Makita has enough power for a jigsaw. But the Moffell, if you're doing like thick hardwood pieces with like lots of curves, it definitely would be a great tool to have. Thank you for watching, and please comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. I'll do a little short video showing off the W1 blade for curves um, on the Moffell. And let me know what you think. Which one would you buy? Until next time, bye.